Welcome to Aspect Art. Today we're in the Bibles Museum, which has recently been renovated. The first show, which is curated by Vincent Bula, is about Jakob de Witt. Now, Jakob de Witt was the most famous ceiling painter of his time. He specialized also in historical paintings, one of which can be seen in the Royal Palace. Now, Jakob de Witt painted scenes primarily from mythology that were floating in the air, ephemeral, light, airy. It's amazing. So come now to the Bible Museum and see Jakob de Witt in the clouds. We're here today at the um, Bibles Museum. Uh, Vincent, could you tell me uh, a little about the new exhibition that you've um, recently mounted here at the Bibles Museum? Well, this is the starting exhibition of uh, the Bibles Museum after two years of renovation and r restoration. And we decided to do an exhibition on Jacob de Witt, who was a painter of ceilings in uh, Amsterdam canal houses. And originally there is a, a large painting, one of his earliest in Amsterdam, uh, original in this museum, in the large hall uh, at the garden side of the museum. And uh, the restoration of this ceiling was, well, more or less uh, uh, the start for this exhibition. Now, could you tell us a little about Jakob de Witt's uh, background and, and what he eventually became in Amsterdam? Well, he was uh, from Amsterdam origin, and he went uh, to Antwerp for his uh, paintings ed education, for his studies. Uh, he lived there with his uncle, who was a wine merchant and an art collector. And there he uh, met painters, well, not r really in life, but uh, their works of R R Rubens van Dijk, uh, and uh, Michelangelo and things like that. So um, there he uh, uh, began to admire those p painters and he was uh, heavily influenced by them. And when he returned uh, on his 22nd to Amsterdam, he uh, first started painting portraits of Amsterdam patricians and then, uh, well, within uh, just a few years, he already started to paint historical and mythological scenes, which was uh, uh, much higher uh, to paint those paintings than uh, portraits. Now, painting a ceiling has always seemed to me to be a very special kind of concept. You know, the whole perspective is somewhat mm -hmm. different. and. Uh, could you tell us a little about his uh, methods of painting a ceiling? Well, he uh, didn't paint them on the ceiling. Uh, all his paintings were oil on canvas. And he painted them in a, in a kind of, um, I don't know really the English word, but it's a kind of rack uh, in which the paintings were hanged. And uh, they were hanged vertically and uh, he painted just uh, like this and uh, uh, afterwards he uh, would place them uh, on the ceiling. 
Now, I read somewhere in the exhibition that he was um, a very fast worker, or that he, uh, did he do a lot of preliminary work before he did uh, the eventual ceiling? Well, when uh, his, paint, uh, when his uh, patrons uh, commissioned for the job, he, uh, he would uh, make a sketch first, uh, a drawing, uh, sometimes just only in ink, but often, very often in uh, watercolors. And uh, when uh, the patron was satisfied with uh, uh, the way he designed the ceiling, he would make an, uh, an oil sketch. And this oil sketch uh, was uh, the last stage before the actual paint, uh, painting of the ceiling. And then the patron would uh, get an idea of what the ceiling would look like. And um, after that, he would make the final ceiling. These oil sketches, he, uh, uh, Jacob Witt uh, uh, kept in his own uh, possession. Uh, so at the end of his life, he had all these paintings in his uh, uh, and uh, after he died, he had no children here. He and his wife had no children. They were uh, sold in an auction and then uh, after that they were spread around the world. But uh, uh, he had himself uh, a large collection of these oil sketches, so he also had a, a large range of designs of all these ceilings. Now he also specialized in some a, a type of painting that often looks like marble, didn't he? Could you tell us a little about that and, and why it was popular at that time? Well, it, uh, those kind of paintings were already popular in Jakob de Witt's time, but he was very skilled in this particular uh, painting, um, in this particular manner of paint, painting. And um, he was so famous for it that these kind of paintings were called after him. They were called uh, witches. And uh, he was so famous uh, in painting these uh, kind of uh, witches that he was already falsified uh, during his lifetime. So, um, and well, when you look at these paintings, uh, these uh, witches, uh, they are very uh, well made and they really look like marble reliefs or sometimes wood reliefs depending on the color. The, he also painted them in brown paint, paint and in uh, pink, so they would resemble uh, pink marble or wooden reliefs. And how were they incorporated in people's houses? Was it really meant to look like wood or what? Well, uh, most of these uh, witches were placed uh, above the door or in a chimney uh, surrounded by uh, a very, very luxurious stucco uh, work. And uh, together it would seem that these were real marble reliefs. Uh, of course, you. Uh, when you looked uh, nearer to the painting, you would see that this was only an imitation, but well, because it was so very well done, it was an art in itself. So people would admire it uh, as well as, as if they were marble reliefs. Now, the, the, the painting of ceilings. Uh, was a, a very popular affectation for a period of time. Was it popular in the 17th, 18th, and 19th century, or how long did that style last? Well, it already beca begun in the 17th century. Uh, Gerard de la Resse, he was very famous for some paintings uh, of ceilings, but we hardly have any ceilings uh, left of him. Uh, one of the teachers of Jacob de Witt, Albert van Spiers, he was very famous for his door pieces and ceiling uh, paintings. But none of these ceilings are left. Well, maybe they are, but maybe they are hidden behind uh, newly painted ceilings. Um, and it, uh, of course, Jacob de Witt was very popular, so he made uh, 
50 to 80 of these ceilings only in Amsterdam. Uh, most of them are uh, uh, disappeared now, but and it's still continued uh, into the 19th century. And uh, well, by the end of the 19th century, it more or less stops. Now you were very fortunate when you were mounting this exhibition. You actually came across an unexpected uh, find about Jakob de Wet, didn't you? Yes. Um, uh, one of the members who uh, participated in the preparation of this exhibition, he's the director of Museum Amstelkring, and uh, he's uh, uh, one of the people who knows a lot about Jakob de Wit. And he was in one of the, uh, a newly renovated church in Diemen. And in the boarding room of that church, there was a painting. And this painting was, uh, uh, well, they said that it w was painted by a man called Averis. And uh, Gus van den Hout, he thought, well, that's a strange name. I never heard of this painter. and. Uh, well, let's have a look at it. And then he looked at his signature, and then he discovered that it was a genuine De Witt. And uh, it was a very early one, uh, one of his earliest paintings made in Amsterdam, dating from 1716. So that was two years before Jacob De Witt painted the large ceiling here in the Biblical Museum. And um, fortunately, we could uh, get this painting for the exhibition just in a few weeks before the opening of the ex exhibition. So we were very pleased with it, that it could uh, hang at, at the ex exhibition. Could you tell the people where the Bibles Museum is and when they can come and see this exhibition? Yes, it's uh, uh, situated on the Gentleman's Canal, Herengracht, and it's uh, open seven days a week uh, from 10 till 5, and on Sundays from 1 uh, p.m. to 5 p.m. Vincent, thank you very much for being with us today. Okay, thank you very much.